Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to Part 5 of Building and Detailing the Ravel Monogram 148 Scale C47. In Part 5, I'm going to demonstrate my dry brushing and sponging techniques using silver paint. So, let's get started. Here are the large interior parts. And uh, they came out pretty good. Put them over here, and uh, I also got the interior of the landing gears here. What I'll do is I, I need to clean this up a little bit, so I'll probably use a steel wool pad to go ahead and remove some of this loose overspray. But uh, came out pretty good, and uh, it'll be a little bit of a challenge to get tape in here, but uh, it'll look pretty good when I'm done. You see my fingerprints here. I need to get rid of those too. On the fuselage interiors, it was primed and then the interior is in chromate color. And then what I did was there's padding here and so I used a lighter, slightly lighter zinc chromate which I just mixed a little bit of uh, flat white with. So. Uh, the uh, tape on this side is ready to come off. On this interior, you've got two instrument boxes here, so what I'll do before I remove the tape, I'll just tape around these instrument boxes with small strips of tape right here, and then uh, tape off these areas, and then just shoot it with one layer of flat black and uh, lighter, light, lightened flat black and uh, we'll be good to go and then I'll be able to pull the tape off and do a little detail painting here. Again, primed interior color and then um, what I did here, again, a lighter color of the interior zinc chromate and uh, so we're ready to take the tape off and once we do that I'll show you the variance in colors. So, so far so good. I'm not going to detail paint any of this uh, because you're not going to see it. I'm only going to have the doors open a tiny bit to be able to just kind of peek in there. You're not really going to see much. So uh, I'm not worried about it. And through the glass, I'll check it. If through the glass you can, you can see this, I'll go ahead and detail paint these. And I may just go ahead and do it anyway. But uh, I really like the way it's coming out. So far, so good. I've got the tape removed on the interior and it came out pretty good. You really can't see the variance in color because of the distance here. So <clears throat> I've removed the tape on the interior of the left side of the fuselage, the port side of the fuselage, and now you can see the difference in colors. I've had a little bit of a problem with paint peeling off of the surfaces. I'm not sure I understand what's going on here. This has never, this happened to me when I built the uh, uh, 1 to 200 scale Renoir Revell submarine. I had a lot of paint peeling and I had cleaned the parts real well. I even cleaned them with alcohol. But uh, not only did it pull up the surface paint, it also pulled up the primer. So I can go ahead, I'm not worried about this, but these tiny areas here and this area up here, I'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> put little drops of the interior color too to clean that up. So thankfully it hasn't done it anywhere else. But uh, it, uh, when I, once I put it all together, what I'll do is I'll clean the surface with alcohol real good and hopefully that'll solve the paint peeling problem. But it uh, came out pretty good. I've got the instrument boxes on the inside of the fuselage on both sides taped up for airbrushing and uh, I'll use really low pressure air and that slightly lighter flat black for this instrument console. 
and here I want to show you how I did this I left most of the tape in place from the previous airbrush session of the lighter interior color made some adjustments and added more tape again low pressure lighted flat black and uh, we'll be done and we can pull all the tape off and take a look at it hopefully I won't have any more areas where the paint pulls up All right, I've got the tape removed, and uh, it came out pretty good. Got a little bit of paint that pulled up right in here, and a tiny piece there. I can go ahead and touch those up, and a little bit right there. I still have not figured out why this is happening, but uh, luckily it's only in those small areas. On this side, looking pretty good a little bit of tape pulled up paint here here and tiny drop here and uh, we'll do a little bit of detail painting here and the side will be ready so we're in good shape we're ready to do some dry brushing and I've got some paint in the cab and we'll go ahead and get as much of this paint off as we can and we just want to hit the highlights here so we'll do some edging work See how the paint is just catching on the edges. And uh, there's some here. We'll go ahead and get these areas here. here and there's a little bit here Let me accent that just a little bit more not bad so we'll go ahead and do this side now these and these and these if you don't put a lot of pressure on the brush the paint will just be on those tips so that accents it just a little bit and now we'll get the other side <clears throat> I'll get some more paint here I'm going to clean this inside out. And then we'll get some more paint. This is enamel, <clears throat> but um, acrylics will work just as well. And I always clean the tops. And yes, I go through a lot of tissues, but um, my paint lasts a long time keeping those paint caps clean and the tops of the bottles okay we just want to get this area here 
and here, and here, here, and we'll get in here a little bit. Once we do the finished coats, <clears throat> I'll be able to get these top edges. There we go. Less is always better when you're dry brushing. Okay. I'll add a little more here. <clears throat> All right. Now on the props, I'm just going to do the tips. Now, <clears throat> the these edges on the props, I'm going to use a pencil, but I need to get the painting done first and let that dry, and then I'll use the pencil here, and then you have to seal it, so I'll seal it with some flat, and then uh, I can go ahead and gloss it, add the decals, and seal it again. Just a little bit. hint. You just want a hint. There we go. And that one looks good. We'll put a little more paint on here. And again, the brush is having a stiff, flat brush that's real short is real important and the paint has got to be streaked in the direction of airflow see how the paint's picking up on just the the raised detail here there we go just a hint. So, now, this one. We've got a little bit of paint left here before it starts to get dry. And I'm just going to do these edges. There we go. get this side done and then I'll replenish my paint. Again, clean the top. And let's get some more paint on here. Clean the top of the bottle. Set it off to the side so you don't knock it over like I've done many times. And we'll do the other side.
There we go. I'll go ahead and get this edge. Drunk way too much coffee this morning again. You can see how the subtle effect is really enhancing the appearance and it's just this additive effect of very subtle dry brushing that highlights things and helps things pop okay now let's see what we can do with this bulkhead just along the edges here light pressure on the brush so that the brush is just hitting these edges there we go let's do the back side and see what we can do here let's see we'll start here And we'll get a little down here. And we just want just a little bit here. We'll do the vertical ones first. And uh, there we go. Need a little more. Wasn't any paint on there. And now let's do the horizontal, the vertical ones. Okay, that's all you need. Now, you got to do this side, and it's just a door, so we'll come back and do some sponging. But let's go ahead and get the door. You're not going to see this once these bulkheads are in place, but we'll go ahead and do that anyway. Stuff keeps drifting away from me. Okay, now on this, this is a kind of a cloth covering, so you just want the edges where there's metal. There you go. And we'll just get a hint of it right there. There we go. On the base where there's a lot of scuff marks, and you get a lot of paint wears off, we'll go ahead and do these. You're not going to see it, but for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and do this. Okay. So, we've got some dry brushing done. And so now, um, we'll go ahead and uh, I want to do the interiors of the fuselage where there's ribbing. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and close this top up. Yeah, let me clean the brush before we go any further. And uh, we don't want paint drying on here ruin my brush because I clean my brushes after every use 
They have lasted me for years. All right, let me get set up and we'll do the interior bulkheads. I'll get back with you in just a second. To continue our weathering, we'll go ahead and do the inside framing here that Monogram so diligently put into their detailing. And again, we just want to hit the top edges where we can. This framing is not very high so it's kind of hard to do this. But okay. And we'll do this one. Get the framing going the other way, which isn't as distinct, but we can we'll go ahead and catch it. Okay. We got a little bit left in here, so we'll go ahead and use it. Let's see, what can we get in here? There's a frame here. We'll go ahead on the bulkhead. No frame on that side. So now we need to get this framing. The stringers on the inside. And we'll do these first. Just a really light touch so that the brush bristles just hit the top edges. Okay, now let's do the stringers going the other way. I'm gonna need more paint here in a second, but we'll go ahead and work on this. getting kind of goopy but I think we'll have enough and we'll kind of do this too there we go so let me get this top cleaned cap on here for now. All right, now, okay, plain Jane interior and one that's got a little bit of highlighting to it. Nice difference. So, 
Let's go ahead and get this side done. Top clean. I guess I go through a lot of tissues. And this one's got more ribbing on it. So again, we'll do the verticals first. Let's see how we do here. Yeah, let me get it from this angle. There we go. Notice how I'm not trying to catch all the edges. Variance works better. Okay, got the verticals. Let's go ahead and do the horizontals. And we'll start here. Okay, we are almost done. We got to capture this framing here. Had a little too much paint on here, but that's okay. Looks pretty good. This concludes part five, and stay tuned for part six of building and detailing the Ravel Monogram 148 scale C47, where we use pastel dust to dirty up the interior parts. Have a great evening and happy scale modeling. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com, where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!